good afternoon, everyone. I'm Monsignor Kevin McCoy. I'm the pastor of Holy Trinity Church. We'd like to take this opportunity to welcome you here as we are going to take just a brief tour of uh, the, uh, the new church, Holy Trinity Church, here that serves Holy Trinity Catholic Parish of Webster County. We're outside the uh, front of the, of the new church just to offer us a little bit of explanation on the design. The church itself is designed in the form of a Latin cross, and you'll see that from the aerial view, how clearly that is true of this particular classical design. Beginning out here outside, we would just want to note that again, the uh, design team made some very specific recommendations in terms of picking up on some of the surrounding buildings here, St. Edmund Catholic School, that's directly behind us here, as well as uh, the uh, Marion home across the way all making use of various colors of brownish red bricks. We've used a, um, a similar brick in this church with limestone base and accents. What you see behind us, of course, is the main entrance to the church. It's designed a very pleasing classical structure. The little phrase underneath the door that welcomes us says Domus Dei et Portica Celi. So that's the Latin phrase meaning, this is the house of God and the gate to heaven. The significance of that, of course, is that here is where we come as a community of faith to gather to worship our God. It's a significant place for us as a community of believers. And our idea is, is that here we come to be nourished by God's word and God's sacrament so that, again, we may one day be with him in his heavenly kingdom. And so this Latin phrase sums up so much of what it is that we're about. Hecas Domus Dei et Porta This is the house of God and the gate to heaven. The north tower of the church here actually is the tower that houses the two bells. The bells themselves are not a part of the history of Holy Trinity Parish, as so many of the artifacts in the church are, but they do come from within the diocese. One of the bells is from St. Margaret's and Rolf, and the other is from St. Benedict, Benedict, St. Benedict, Iowa. And again, both of those bells were actually founded uh, in St. Louis, and so they are tonally uh, matching and uh, make a very pleasant sound. They were erected in stationary. They do not swing. They're just operated by hammers because it puts less torque on the tower itself. The tower itself, though, has a space that captures the whole of our, of our Trinity, Holy Trinity Parish. As you see there, that familiar doxology, glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. A whole statement about our belief in our one God as a Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Again, we're going to um, go inside now and just take a little bit of a look at some of the, uh, well, the other design aspects in the terms of the narthex, the welcoming space, and the south tower. come inside the narthex and we're standing now in the uh, south tower. The south tower itself is a tower that is illuminated day and night so it's kind of serves as a beacon for the church and at the base of the tower we've incorporated this medallion that actually came from the parish's sesquicentennial and if you look at it it's in the form of a stained glass window reminiscent of the main stained glass that's in the church itself that came from Sacred Heart. And it is just expressive of the history of Catholicism here in Webster County, and as much as that it names all of the 12 parishes that once were extant here in Webster County, serving the needs of the Catholics across this whole um, county of Webster. The whole outside speaks from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 28, verse 20. Behold, I am with you always until the end of the age. It incorporates so much of our history of who we are as a, a pilgrim people, a people of faith, and how it is we don't forget them as we move now into this new house of, of worship that houses our parish community. Now behind me down the hall is just a couple of functional rooms. There's a parlor for um, smaller groups as well as a meeting room and then restroom facilities are down here, all modern in design, all very serviceable in terms of 
well, group meetings of various sizes. So again, it's a nice uh, amenity to have that we never had in the other in the other churches. Well, now we moved into the narthex proper. You'll see it's just a rather open space designed to where people can be greeted. It serves multiple functions in terms of, well, if we have to have a, a visitation for a, someone who's uh, passed away um, and they do the visitation here, well, that can occur right here in this space. It's very open and welcoming. It does have um, one piece of very interesting art in it and the sedalia that actually came from St. Joseph's in Duckham as well as the behind me on the, on the top of the wall is the crucifix that actually came out of the Church of Christ the King in Dayton. The design itself was just meant to be a very open design and making use of the starlit blue ceiling, kind of reminiscent of the Blessed Mother Mary. It's given way to very much natural light with all of the, of the window glass. And particularly here to the south, you can see there is the Sacred Heart Courtyard. It's made, it, the, the statue of the Sacred Heart that came from Sacred Heart Church and its, uh, its pedestal were brought over and then the um, paver bricks that were at Sacred Heart and additional ones were added to form the courtyard itself. And so as weather improves, that provides an opportunity for people to gather outside as well as inside here in this space. And for weddings, the parlor serves as a room for brides and uh, in preparation for, well, the uh, wedding itself and also provide a nice venue for some of their photographers. transitioned now from the gathering space the narthex through the doors and we now are standing at the baptismal font. The font itself is designed in an octagonal form uh, reminiscent of the seven days of creation and the eighth day in terms of which we all, we all hope to spend with God in eternity. The font itself is the one piece was totally newly constructed for this church so it um, picks up the use of stone as well as the um, rift cut oak wood reminiscent in terms of the quadrifoils that are used there reminiscent of the uh, ends of the pews that we'll show you that came from sacred heart all of the um, various liturgical accoutrements such as like the paschal candle stand and all of the other candle uh, holders and tabernacles and things of this nature they're all been used elsewhere in the parish, the 12 parishes over the years. And so while we don't have all of that out on display, uh, for example, the candlesticks on the altar come from St. Joseph in Duncombe, just as this uh, candle holder, the Paschal candle holder comes from Sacred Heart. We try to incorporate tastefully so many artifacts from the various churches to be able to make this feel very much uh, well, a church that houses not only our people today, but brings with us that tradition of the faith and carries on well into the future. As you can see, if you look at the floor, this is all done in kind of a beige terrazzo. Sanctuary steps, the whole sanctuary itself, continues that same coloration. Now we've used gray and a black in terms of accent colors. And that's, of course, to provide us some definition. But again, the continuity that here is where we are incorporated into the divine life. As we are baptized, washed away, there goes that original sin, and we are incorporated newly into the divine life of God. That, well, sacrament of initiation is carried on forward then to the very altar where we receive the body and blood of our Lord and hear the word proclaimed. So this newly born child of God comes here to be worship, to worship God and is nourished, like I say, by his uh, sacrament and by his word. And so we're tying the two, together, the two areas together purposely with this architectural design. As the Holy Trinity Parish came to be, in around 2006 with that declaration, there were at that time eight functioning parishes. We've used medallions here in the center 
of the aisle. And if you notice by its design, this actually is a design that's taken from the sanctuary windows at Corpus Christi Church. It's not by coincidence that this work up design has eight petals to be representative of those eight parishes that existed as Holy Trinity came to be. If you look up, you can see all of this is laminate wood. In the cross members here, if you notice in the center, there's a pentagon at the very height of the ceiling. That was designed, offered by the design team and architects to express the simple fact that in 2008, as we went from, well, what was eight worship sites down to five worship sites, they used the Pentagon structure to capture that reality, that we're moving from what was five sites into one as we come to build Holy Trinity Catholic Church. Now again, mind you, I told you that there are a lot of artifacts that are well, used throughout the building. This pew in, and all of the ends of the pews that you see here in the church, this comes from Sacred Heart Church. And so these pew ends are 100 years old, and they've all been refinished and restained, refurbished to serve our needs here. Now between them, of course, all this is modern seating, and as well as new kneelers and things to accommodate the worshipers here. Different tables and things that we've had introduced around here to assist with, you know, the celebration of the sacraments. Well, those are all brought from different places. The ambry hanging on the wall, which holds the sacred chrism, the oil of the infirm, as well as the oil of the catechumens, that actually had hung at St. Matthew's in Clare and it was refurbished so that it could be used in this church. As you look off to the side, you'll see the stations of the cross are placed along the walls. Those stations actually were hand carved and painted in Oberammergau, with the artisanship of the hand carved stations as well as their color. And against the bluish background of the wall color that was chosen by the design team, they really are offset. And um, in fact, I had one parishioner, when I explained to her that these actually came from Corpus Christi, she says, I don't remember seeing them there. Again, you mind you, they were against a beige wall at Corpus Christi. moved a little further down the main aisle of the church and I want to just point out a few aspects of the sanctuary. You'll notice here over my uh, left shoulder is the uh, major crucifix. The crucifix itself, uh, the corpus, the body of Christ, is the one that hung at Corpus Christi Church and the cross that holds that corpus was the one that hung there over the altar. The um, Gunder Church furnishings, they manufactured not only the insides of the pews but also that larger cross that encases that crucifix from Corpus Christi. The history of the, of the, of the, of the Corpus Christi corpus actually had been hung in the uh, provincial seminary in Dubuque and I'm not sure of exactly how it came to our possession here in Webster County but I'm sure it was probably through some of the uh, the uh, connections with the Sisters of the Presentation who took over that property uh, for their use as a mother house. Um, and again, one of our own parishioners actually fashioned the original, cruise, uh, the original cross to which that corpus was uh, fixed. Now the altar itself, you can see it's very much the same colors of stone that was used in the baptistry. But on the mensa, the table top, that actually is white Carrara marble and is the altar top that was used at Sacred Heart Church here in Fort Dodge. These are the only two steps that you'll find in the church, the two steps into the sanctuary. Again, all of the furniture was fashioned around that ideal of using the quadrifoils that you see in the ends of the pews, and you'll see them repeated in some of the accent work, not only here at the altar, but they also come at the ambo where the word of God is proclaimed. In fact, the frontispiece of the ambo is actually the original ambo from Sacred Heart. 
And so again, that helped to inspire the use of that quadrifoil. And there again, on the main altar, you'll see the use of the triquetra, which is a, a, a term for the um, Celtic symbol of the Trinity. Again, if you recall when I mentioned outside that the church is built in the form of the Latin cross, I think here, standing at the altar in the sanctuary now, you can get a little bit better idea of what, how that cross translates in terms of the worship space because we walk through the length of the nave and now you can see to the, no to the north and to the south the transepts which form those arms of the cross. And again, that provides, well, adequate seating in, on COVID days for a thousand people uh, in these three sections of, the, of the, the nave and the two transepts. Behind me here is the, the main tabernacle here in the church. The pedestal itself very much is the altar built of the same stone. The reredos, which forms the backdrop to the altar, or I should say the altar repose, is composed of oak and again, it's a limestone that actually lies across there. And it's um, um, again, very, well, highly polished and things. So it's a, it maintains that whole harmony between what is the terrazzo floor and the manufactured stone as well as then the natural stone here, the limestone. People ask, what are those images at the pinnacles? You have the four evangelists on the lower forms. So Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And at the top of this pinnacle is the Christ. The statues of Mary, of Mary and Joseph that are in the niches here. Those uh, are original. Again, they're the part of the Oberammergau work and they hung in Corpus Christi Church. The rose window comes from Sacred Heart and it's the stained glass. It was, germ was manufactured in Germany back in the 30s. But that's also true for the clear story windows here that uh, decorate the upper portion of the walls of the nave. So that was all manufactured, well, actually taken out of Sacred Heart was sent to various places here in the United States. Reiner Glass out of Winona actually did the refurbishing and rebuilt an entirely new frame, wooden frame, uh, to house that window. And it was installed just, just literally, well, a couple of weeks before we opened with the dedication of the church. The chairs and things that are here in the sanctuary, they were all designed and built for specific use in this sanctuary. So they'd be some of only the new pieces of furniture that are actually here in the church today. As you're looking out from the altar, we have two shrines. We have a shrine to Our Lady of Guadalupe. And then on the north side, it's dedicated to the Holy Family. Again, that's reminiscent of the Holy Family shrine that was in Corpus Christi. These are not the same statues, however. Um, they are different, they're different statues because the statues at, at uh, Corpus Christi, well, frankly, that's what's where Mary and Joseph come from, and uh, they just were too large to incorporate in that small of a space. We're going to go on back and take a look at the day chapel. Well, we've just entered into the, uh, the day chapel. Uh, it's used predominantly now for the reservation of the Blessed Sacrament for adoration and private prayer because the space, oddly enough, is too small because of the coronavirus pandemic that they're in right now. But I just want to point out a few of the, the highlights. The chairs that we have in here all come from uh, Sacred Heart Church from St. Teresa's Chapel. The furnishings, the ammo, the altar, and the altar of repose, the tabernacle, all were original to Corpus Christi. Again, Gunder Furniture took those pieces of furniture and refurbished them for use in this space. The chapel itself, and if you get to take a look around, it has no windows. Well, it really has windows, it's just that you can't see them. Uh, they will let in the natural daylight that washes down the limestone walls. And the whole idea of this was that, well, this would create that private place that allows you just to, well, draw quiet 
and spend time with the Lord, reserved here in the Blessed Sacrament. The natural light that comes through the clear glass windows that you cannot see on either side of the tabernacle do help to wash that same limestone and it creates a very warm feeling um, with just the natural light, with no, none of the artificial light on at all. Stained glass window is a new piece that was commissioned for use in this chapel. It's indicative in the reds and the purples and things of the, and the swirling of our prayers rising up to God like incense. And again, it is red, red and reminiscent in terms of so many different things, of the Holy Spirit as well as the blood of the martyrs and things. There's so much um, that can be said of it, but again, it's really meant to draw us to the Lord and raise our minds and thoughts to God. Again, on the back wall of the chapel, you'll see, again, we make use of some of the artifacts. There, there's a statue of Mary and Joseph. Those two statues actually come from St. Joseph's Church in Barnum. They're hand carved and painted. And then we've also brought the crucifix from St. Teresa's Chapel. The stations of the cross that you'll see in the limestone, those actually came out of Christ the King Church in Dayton and were used here. And that design was, they were intentionally designed for use in this particular space. So that kind of gives you the major portions of Holy Trinity Church uh, as it exists now, and we'll see how things develop over time. Uh, we get beyond these you know, days of the coronavirus, and we can put all the rest of the chairs in this chapel. It will probably be a chapel that will accommodate about 100 different uh, 100 people. But right now, we've got it, I think, restricted to somewhere around 40 or 45 people. So again, it's at about half of its capacity. But again, we hope you've had the opportunity to enjoy this video and uh, welcome to Holy Trinity Catholic Church.